Each year we welcome thousands of nonprofits to the Nonprofit Technology Conference. This year, the 12 NTC will be held in San Francisco on April 3rd through the 5th. Learn more at n10.org forward slash NTC. All right, I am back here with some this year's and last year's winners of the Nonprofit Do-Gooder video, uh, video Awards. So what I want to do is talk to Jan first. Jan Gunter was last year's winner for Best Medium Organization with the Ronald McDonald House in Austin. Um, I wanted to ask you about your experience with the awards last year. Um, you know, how, how did you think about submitting a video? Tell us a little bit about the background. So it was a big deal for us to create this video in the first place because we normally don't spend um, significant dollars on, on video. We do it on the cheap. But we decided it was for our 25th anniversary and we decided to um, hire a creative studio, Shiny Object in Austin, to do something uh, that was very different. And so what we did was we had little uh, finger people who, um, and it was called Meet the Digits, and um, yeah, it was it was a bit whimsical, but also very um, I think share showed the impact of the Ronald McDonald House, the difference that the Ronald McDonald House in Austin makes for um, a family when their child is is ill or injured. And um, so we were we we thought it was a good video, and then somebody just said, oh, you should enter this award. So we did, and that's how much thought we put into you know actually um, entering the contest. And I was. I was really stunned when we were a finalist, and then even more so when uh, we won the award. It was very, um, very exciting, and uh, one of the greatest things for us was uh, being showcased on YouTube for 24 hours. Oh my goodness, on the home page of YouTube, <laughs> that was amazing. And our um, our video has had almost now almost 200,000 views, and and we're just a, we're a local. We're Ronald McDonald House Charities of Austin in Central Texas, so it's we're local, and so. That number of views for us is is just extraordinary. So it really has put, you know, a lot of people um, see what the Ronald McDonald House does. And what's really cool about this is that our story is really the story of all Ronald McDonald Houses. So we told a local story, but it really is this. It's it, we were actually also telling the story of 300 plus other Ronald McDonald Houses around the world. So that is very, um, you know, uh, it, it was a great kind of scale. Um, yeah, it, it just shows the impact of video, like, perfectly, I think. So let me talk to you guys. You are the winners, uh, two of the winners, this year, and we're going to see the videos um, at the Lunchtime Awards luncheon. Uh, so let me ask you uh, to describe, you know, who you are, what your nonprofit is, and describe the video and the campaign that goes with it. All right. So. I'm from P Protect Our Defenders, and what our organization seeks to do is, is highlight and reform the very serious issue of sexual abuse and rape in the military. And so this is a story that uh, has, uh, is just beginning to be told. There are, uh, by the Department of Defense estimates, there are 19,000 uh, rapes or sexual assaults in the military uh, of, of active service people every year and only 13.5% of those are reported. And so what we wanted to do is take this very emotional and uh, disturbing and moving issue and take it out of the confines of Congress and, and hearing rooms and bring it into living rooms. And so we, we hired a, uh, a, 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 an outfit out of Chicago called Interchange and they helped us to make the video and they really helped us to see it as a visual story. Instead of, instead of having congressional testimony, what we did was we actually did interviews all over the country of victims of, of military sexual assault, victims and activists who were willing to uh, show their courage and step forward and talk about what uh, they had been through. And so, so what we're seeking to do is raise awareness. And, uh, and I think we've, you know, we've created a very powerful video that we have integrated into our strategy because of the YouTube click-through features, uh, you can actually see the video, which is under two minutes. It's short, and it's very, and it's it's uh, very spare in its storytelling. You can click through and actually sign a petition and become an activist rather than just a viewer. And that's what we're seeking to do here with the video: is uh, is is convert passive viewers into activists who really care and have joined our cause. Awesome. Awesome. That's really, really cool. Okay, Rob. Sure. Um, so I'm Rob Singer. I'm with Ancestry.com. And 
um, different than, than you all. We're actually not a nonprofit. We were partnered with uh, the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum, so they are the nonprofit that we were actually partnered with and, and doing the work. So we we produced the video on behalf of a joint project with them, um, known as the World Memory Project, and so. Um, the museum has been able to acquire uh, just a vast amount of records on the Holocaust. And um, similar to the records that we obtained through our website, um, these are hard records. They're in paper format. Some of them are digital, but for the most part, they are records from other countries that have existed. And the power of using those records enables survivors and the relatives of survivors, anybody that was touched um, by this incredibly tragic event to get more information and in many places get closure on those stories that happened. And so with those records at the museum, um, people would literally have to go to the museum and get a historian there to help them by doing a lot of manual research through this to help um, develop those stories. And so in partnership with um, Ancestry, um, the goal of the project was to digitize all of these records so that they would become searchable in the public space for free. So anybody around the world um, can get access to this information and get the closure and get the information um, that they're looking for. And so um, the, the genesis of the project is that uh, we take these hard records, we digitize them on the ancestry side, and then through a group of um, volunteer contributors around the world, they then code these records so that they are searchable. And I'm happy to say at this point we have over one million records now that have been coded. Um, so we are on a trajectory um, you know, to, that would be unmatched by just a single organization doing it. And so the purpose of the videos, so the video that won here is one in a series of videos that we shot um, of either Holocaust survivors or the families of Holocaust survivors in the museum to, ways to raise awareness for the World Memory Project. And the sort of call to action at the end of it was to get, um, inspire people to join in the coding process so these records can become um, part of the public sphere. And so um, this was just an incredibly warm, touching video of somebody who can just so clearly show the emotion of being able to get what they needed to get out of this. And the, the, the story of the Finkelsteins is just this incredibly touching story about how having access to these records, finding out the true story of what happened will actually transform somebody's life for the better. So. True. Um, are you, are you actually all of you, integrating video more into your overall communications or messaging strategy? Are you doing, well, you're obviously doing more videos. Um, do you, I guess part two of that question is, do you have any tips or advice for nonprofits who have not yet started doing videos but might be thinking about it? Sure, so um, we do a lot of video. Um, the, to your point, the power of YouTube is, is incredible. And, um, Similar to anything in, in a marketing context, that word of mouth and, and virality has such a stronger effect on people than, than does a corporation speaking directly to you. And so um, video is this phenomenal ground by which you can put out a message and have people propagate it and comment on it and essentially make it their own and give it a power that you just can't get through standard advertising. And so. Um, I am a huge proponent of using video. Um, to me, the, the, the key to success on this, especially from a nonprofit standpoint, is to make sure that you connect with the emotion and not what you're trying to get somebody to do. And so inspiring them through an offer or talking about your product is generally not the, the best way. That, um, but when you like, look at the Finkelsteins, when you see the video today, it is really showing the emotion behind what you are trying to do. And when you can clearly get that emotion out and then, to your point, get 200,000 people to watch it and tell other people about it and get them to watch it and put the comment strings on the bottom of it and talk about how they connected to it and the emotions that were driven from it, it is an incredibly powerful way to mobilize a lot of people at it actually an incredibly low cost.
Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with all of that. And, and I think that, you know, it, it is about that emotional connection. And also, it's about trying to seed uh, the viral nature of the video. So, you know, what you want to do is, is ask your followers on Facebook to share the video. You want to ask your, your Twitter followers to, to share it on Twitter. And also, if there are bloggers who are interested in your topic, make sure that they embed that video uh, anytime they write about it. So there's a, a visual element as well as an intellectual element that people can connect to uh, so, that they're, so that they're receiving information about your cause, you know, through all of their senses rather than just their, you know, just uh, their brain, right. uh, you know, through their eyes and actually experiencing the, the, uh, the, the storytelling that you've, uh, you know, already invested in. So yeah, we're not creating as we're still not creating as much video as I would like to, um, and but but it is I agree completely with what you're talking about about just like connecting with the story, and we do we've got everything on our on our YouTube site from just a, an interview that I an impromptu interview that I had one day with a little three year old who was at the Ronald McDonald House. It's just you know a, a minute of pure preciousness, and she was very articulate too. You know, one of our staff members saying that his favorite thing about working at the Ronald McDonald House is when he gets to check a family out and, and, and they get to go home after their child has gotten out of the hospital. So I think it's just those little, can be just as simple as those little moments. And I think for anybody that is not doing video, um, there's the do-gooder, um, uh, you know, definitely connect with the do-gooder videos because that's, that's fabulous and the daily do-gooder is just amazing and you can subscribe to that. That's and I'm, I'm giving a commercial. No, no, no. <laughs> yes. And, and also Lights, Camera, Help, Lights, Camera, Help, which is doing fabulous work in video and does training. Um, and, and, and just to take advantage of those resources that are helping nonprofits to or helping promote cause-related video. Exactly. So you come in the middle for that. Right. Right. Way to Nasser. <laughs> Pitching the daily do gooder. Nasser is sorry, Nasser is from C3, who is one of the sponsors of the Do Gooder Video Awards. So I just wanted to say thank you for putting this on. I think it's the most amazing way to bring all kinds of nonprofits into this whole, you know, digital space where where you can really make some huge impact. So if you have any anything to Absolutely, about. and <laughs> thanks, Maddie. And really, um, all the thanks goes to N10, uh, absolutely to YouTube, Cisco, and the Case Foundation for sponsoring this awards, and of course the uh, the terrific entrants and participants this year. Um, just to echo Jan's sentiments, I encourage everyone to check out the Daily Do Gooder. Uh, in six years of doing the Do Gooder Nonprofit Video Awards, we've realized that there is a wealth. Um, just a, a, an abundance of incredible nonprofit video content, but not enough resources to curate that content and really deconstruct those videos in, in an educational way that, that any size nonprofit can learn from to, to communicate better and to use sight, sound, and motion more effectively. Uh, so definitely check out the Daily Do Gooder. Uh, it's one email of great cause video uh, that goes to your inbox every day, and it's, it's a great little lunch break treat, uh, and it keeps you really current on what other orgs are doing. Uh, and of course, Enter next year's contest, keep making great video, keep doing good stuff, and uh, we hope to see you uh, up on stage next year.